Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of my amendment to H.R. 9. Inaction on climate change will lead to the demise of the human species. Science is not a partisan issue, and the science in this case is crystal clear. Climate change is happening, and we as humans are causing it. The amendment that I'm offering today would require the President to include in the administration's strategy how the United States will be able to use all of the diplomatic tools available to help our partners around the world meet their own goals. It's simple. Their success is our success. Their failure is our failure. We all share the same planet, the same environment, and the same atmosphere. We cannot fight this alone. But we have to be in this fight with every tool available to us, and that includes our diplomacy. My amendment recognizes our leadership role that the country can play and can and should play in addressing global ch climate change. This administration has taken a back seat to facing one of our most pressing national security threats, and this amendment puts us back in the global arena, leading this vital charge. Some naysayers and doubters have expressed concern that developing countries are and will take advantage of the Paris Agreement, placing the burden of addressing climate change on the U.S. This is misleading. The agreement requires all parties to develop their own plans to reduce carbon emissions, and rather than retreat from that effort, we should lead it. I serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and just today, Ranking Member McCall said that we have always been leaders on the global stage, and when we are not involved, we leave a power vacuum. This applies militarily, diplomatically, with respect to humanitarian aid, and in the case of climate action as well. The best way for us to secure the safety and health of our planet is for us to be an aggressive leader in the fight against climate change. Pulling out of the Paris Ac Agreement would send a resounding message to the international community that the United States is not in this fight to save this planet. And that is unacceptable. And let us be clear, the fight to stop climate change is not just a fight to save our environment. It's a fight for our economy. It's a fight for the health of everyone and for social justice. It's a fight for national security. And yes, it's a fight for the next generation, for our children and for future generations. It's a fight for humanity. I introduced this amendment because the threat is too grave for us as a country to be doing the bare minimum as laid out in the Paris Agreement. We must also work aggressively with each country to combat climate change at every turn. Inaction is a death sentence for us all. We have the opportunity before us to stand up for our fellow Americans and brothers and sisters around the world, and I'm sure my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and in both chambers of Congress would agree. This, this country we call home and this planet we call home are worth fighting for. I served our country in the Air Force, and I believe in this country. I believe it is a fight, fight worth fighting for. Yes, climate change poses one of, if not the, greatest existential threat to our country but its threats are not insurmountable. Just two days ago, my Pennsylvania became the 24th state to join the U.S. Climate Alliance, committing to work toward cutting greenhouse emissions gas in line with the Paris Agreement. We in Pennsylvania are still in. I'm proud of our Commonwealth for joining this fight for our country. We in Pennsylvania know America is worth it. To vote for my amendment is to commit to our necessary leadership on climate change. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time.